Last week, we saw the first glimpse at the new legendary weapon for evokers. And while that was happening, you probably got absolutely nothing from your weekly vault. Ah, <sighs> good system, right? Anyway, 10.1 has completely changed how you gear in PvP, and today we're going to tell you the biggest winners and losers for this season's tier sets, while giving you some recommendations on what to craft and how to enchant your gear in 10.1. And finally, talking about one enchant that many players don't even know about this season. First up, let's cover some of the best set bonuses from PvE gear in 10.1. Any of the specs we will mention could be seeing a considerable power spike in the coming weeks just from gear alone. Before we start, it's important to know that every tier set bonus is actually nerfed by 50% in PvP. With that in mind, the clear winner for this season's tier is Sub Rogue, especially with their two-piece, which grants symbols of death every shadow dance. This might not seem like a big deal, until you consider their end cap talent called the Rotten, which makes symbols of death give a huge damage bonus to Shadow Strike, adding another layer of burst on top a secret technique. This also means that sub rogues will be playing with the vanish cooldown reduction talent this season, which is nerfed in PvP but allows them to disjoint all of their CDs, making some add-ons less reliable. And if that wasn't enough, the Rogue 4 set also gives a huge damage bonus to Eviscerate. I don't think we need to say much more. Sub rogues are clearly going to be strong once everyone is running around with tier sets. Ironically, Enhancement Shamans also have one of the better tier sets this season. Their 2 set will grant 12% additional mastery and 10% damage bonus whenever their stun is pressed. This means all those one-shot clips you saw early this season probably won't be going away since Enhance is a huge benefactor from cooldown stacking. Another big winner is BM Hunter, who we currently have as an A-tier range DPS spec. Their 2 set bonus is very similar to last season's, giving a damage bonus to kill command, but their 4 set is where things really get interesting, as it offers cooldown reduction on bestial wrath every time rotation abilities are pressed. Hunters already have a talent that reduces the cooldown of BM with barbed shot, so this should mean even more disjointed cooldowns and will definitely help the performance of beast mastery in solo shuffle and in 3v3 with comps like jungle cleave. The last winner we're going to cover is DK, which includes both specs. Frost and Unholy will likely have a power spike in the next few weeks, as both of their tier set bonuses help directly with their win conditions in PvP. Frost DKs will be doing more damage on their Pillar of Frost goes, and Unholy will be seeing more damage during Dark Transformation, which is part of their 45 second setup. If you watched our recent tier lists, you know that Unholy DKs were in need of some love, and once tier sets are widely available, we could see them possibly returning to the high tiers once again. On the other end of the spectrum, Resto Shamans arguably have the worst tier set this season, as it entirely revolves around Healing Rain. Now, there is an optional PvP talent which makes Healing Rain instant, but currently Resto Shamans are over budgeted with Honor talents already. Unfortunately, this is simply a case where PvE balance has likely given Resto Shamans the short end of the stick, and it's quite possible that they will avoid tier sets entirely, especially because of the versatility loss. Elemental Shamans also suffer from a lackluster tier set bonus, which looks good on paper until you remember that the effect is nerfed by half in PvP, meaning it grants Stormkeeper once every 100 seconds, which is sort of underwhelming to say the least. The same is true for Outlaw Rogues, who at least in PvE actually suffer a DPS loss from equipping tier which we can infer might mean that Outlaw got the short end of the stick once again. Destruction Warlocks might also be a bit disappointed in their tier set bonuses, since they both center around Channel Demon Fire, which is a spell that rarely sees play in Arena. By the way, if you want to preview the tier sets for every spec, you can do so in the most unintuitive way possible. All you need to do is open Adventure Journal, then click on Raids at the bottom, go to the drop down menu and select Shadowlands, then go back to the bottom and select Loot. Go to this drop down menu and select item sets, and now you can scroll through the tier sets for every spec. Wow, that made total sense, right? If we didn't explicitly mention your spec, don't worry, we're sure you have lots of questions when it comes to gearing, so be sure to check out our article site to see gear lists for your spec, where we will be providing updates over the coming weeks. You can even use the discount link on each page to sign up for Skillcapped, which gets you instant access to hundreds of site-exclusive PvP guides, and allows you to post questions in our Ask a Pro Discord forum, where you can directly interact with Rank 1 and professional players. Skillcapped is the only place that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating this season while using our guides. If you if you don't, then you shouldn't pay, so visit the links below to get started on your next PvP journey. Anyway, let's move on to crafted gear, which is another place where people have questions. All across the forums, people seem to be confused on how the crafting system works. It's actually really easy. As long as you can move your character from the auction house to the work order NPCs, you can get a best in slot piece for a bit of gold. 
Once you find the piece you want to craft, all you need to do is use the optional reagents at the bottom of the window. You can add an embellishment here, which we will cover in just a second. Finally, you can customize stats here. All of the reagents we mentioned so far can simply be purchased off the auction house. The only parts you can't purchase include trophies of conquest to scale any crafted piece to 450 item level in PvP. But in case you missed the free ones, you can always purchase more from the conquest vendor. The only true obstacle in crafting is getting sparks of shadow flame, which are rewarded from weekly PvP quests and include a catch-up system for alts. Now, as far as embellishments are concerned, there are still some question marks, but here's what we know so far. For almost every caster, with the exception of Elemental Shaman, you're fairly safe crafting a piece with Precog. Chances are you already did this, so for your second piece, you're also fairly safe recrafting or upgrading last season's Infurious gear, which had its effect changed from CC reduction to a main stat proc on dispels, crowd control, or interrupts. Most physical DPS are also fairly safe crafting the Infurious piece that procs main stat. The second embellishment slot is a bit more contentious, but for many melee, it will be safe to craft a piece with the Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch. This effect provides a minimal damage increase, but hey, at least it's consistent. For healers, Precognition is universally a safe pick, since these days interrupts are everywhere and all healers eventually need to hard cast. Again, the second slot is where there is room for debate. Blue Silken Lining is an appealing option for any healer with mastery as a desirable secondary stat, with the only downside being that it's useless when you drop below 90%. Because of this, some healers are experimenting with healing darts, which sims well in PvE, but is shown to be a bit inconsistent inside of Arena. We've seen some questions about the Undulating Spore Cloak, which has a hidden nerf in PvP. While this certainly makes it weaker, the cloak will be safe to craft for everyone later on in the season as a last resort defensive option, very similar to running a Battlemaster's Trinket. We wouldn't recommend crafting this right away, since most players will get more value out of the offensive perks offered by other embellished pieces. The universal question is what slot to craft your items on, and the answer depends on your desired secondary stats. If I play a Resto Druid, that means I want mastery, but unfortunately there are no mastery conquest boots. So to fill this void, I would craft my embellished piece on the boot slot, choosing mastery and versatility or haste as my stats, and selecting the embellishment that I want while scaling the item to 450 using the Trophy of Conquest. You can repeat this process for any conquest piece that doesn't have the stats you want, which allows you to customize your stats more precisely. Once again, be sure to check our articles site to get more class specific information on what to craft for Season 2. Moving on to the good stuff, let's talk about some new enchants. For any dual wielding melee, you'll definitely want to check out the new Shadow Flame Wreath enchant. In most games, this will wind up being 8-12% to of your overall damage, which is pretty significant. The confusing part of this enchant is that you cannot actually enchant your gear unless you are in a specific zone. You will need to locate the Fire Rock Assault on your world map, and then head to that zone. Once you're there, you'll need to find the Shadow Flame Incantation Table, which has two red glowing orbs on top of it. Then simply walk close to the table, and you will be able to enchant your weapons. Now, for any non-dual wielding specs, you can safely skip out on this, getting more value from whatever enchant you were using last season. Healers also have a new optional Spore Tender enchant, which allows them to feed secondary stats to their partners. In our initial testing, this doesn't seem worth it at all, and might even be stealth nerfed in PvP, so definitely pass on this one. For most specs, your enchants will be the same as last season, so there shouldn't be much to worry about on this end. The only exception will be the new Shadowed Belt Clasp, which should now be available on every server in 10.1. Currently, it is quite costly, but the additional stamina will be an absolute must-have in PvP this season, especially with the change to the Trinket Set bonus. Just like everything else we covered today, it can be crafted using work orders or simply purchased off the auction house. Of course, we couldn't make another gearing video without talking about PvE gear. Every season, there's the obvious question, do I need to PvE to be competitive? The answer is still no. While the new raid does offer a few desirable pieces with unique effects, none of these items will even be 100% necessary for itemizing your character. Sure, you might be able to get slightly more secondary stats with rings, but with all PvP gear scaling to 450, there's very minimal competitive advantage. This isn't BFA anymore where you need to grind keys for some bis trinkets. This is Dragonflight, baby, where you can literally buy your best gear from the auction house. In the comments below, let us know your thoughts on the gearing system in Season 2. Do you like it? Do you hate it? If so, what would you change? 
And while you're doing that, we'd like to remind you that Skillcapped is the only place that guarantees you will gain at least 400 rating while using our website. There has never been a better time to be a Skillcapped member. From hundreds of guides to personalized PvP support with our Discord Ask a Pro feature, Skillcapped members are seeing huge rating gains in Dragonflight. Last season, our website members hit their rating goals from rival all the way up to rank 1. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started on your next PvP journey. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, we'd like to thank you all for watching. See you soon.